Hey everybody, thanks for joining us at Artisan Cakes, where we provide the tools and the knowledge to build your passion for baking. Today, we are talking about poppy paint. So I have discovered poppy paint and I'm totally in love. Poppy paint is an alcohol-based, fast drying paint. And one of the things that I think is superb about poppy paint, you guys know I'm an artist, I really enjoy painting onto fondant, but it's really hard to layer other colors on top of colors because when you go to put that second coat down, it lifts the other color up. So I actually purchased poppy paint with the uh, expectation of painting on fondant and then I found that it was so resourceful for so many different things. Um, because it's alcohol based, it dries really fast, it doesn't bead up, so it's perfect for chocolates. Oh my gosh, chocolate covered strawberries, chocolate covered pretzels. It's also great for candy, like um, candy dipped apples. It's also great for painting on just about anything. And right now I'm just whipping up some more milk chocolate. So poppy paint was developed for someone who really loved making cake pops. And you guys know that my attention span is really short. So instead of cake pops, I thought I would do cake sandwich squares. So these are cookie molds and they uh, are perfect for your favorite brand of sandwich cookie. They are also great for filling with other fantastic items. So we are going to make our own cake truffle sandwich cookie sort of thing. You guys know this is live, right? So <laughs> I am putting a little bit of chocolate in the bottom of each of these molds. This is just milk chocolate confectioner coating by Guitard. Tastes amazing. We're going to let that set up a little bit while we talk about poppy paint. Tap that down and get the air bubbles out because there will be air bubbles hanging out down here on the bottom of the mold. We're going to let this set up a little bit. Um, one of the things that surprised me about poppy paint when I pulled it out and started playing with it was how fast it dried. Guys, when I say it dries fast, we're talking like <laughs> just like seconds, 30 seconds. Um, so I contacted the wonderful folks at poppy paint and talked about how to thin and how to keep it from drying quite as fast. And one of the products they offer is actually a thinner. And you can use it to dilute, both dilute your colors as well as keep it fluid a little bit longer. For cleanup, you're going to use something with a really high alcohol content. My favorite is Everclear. Um, I did try vodka, but it didn't seem to have quite enough alcohol content to uh, get in and remove the, the paint itself from my paint brushes. So Everclear is going to be your best and least expensive option. You can also use extracts, but again, that's a little pricey for me. So I'm going to use some Everclear. So before you begin, pour yourself up a little couple shots of Everclear there. And be prepared to put your paint brushes in it to dry. All right, I think I'm all set up. I have three different substrates out. I've got chocolate, I've got fondant, um, and then I also have Fonderific, which has a little blend of that modeling chocolate feeling in it. Um, so it's a little tougher for me to paint using gels or standard water-based paints. You might ask, why don't we use um, oil-based paints? Well, I like oil-based paints a lot, um, but they tend to smear, so they don't want to dry immediately. I'm just going to place my cake truffles into my chocolate right now. This is just standard cake pop batter. There we go. We're going to let that set up and then I'll add another layer of chocolate and uh, let them form up into solid pieces. I'm going to pop this into the refrigerator real quick to make it happen a little bit faster. I 
The folks at Poppy Paint were extremely helpful. If you have any questions, they're there for you. Um, I'm going to play around with some fall colors on a fondant leaf. So I've pulled out some basic yellow, orange, and red and rose gold. I also have a little bit of whitener. Um, this is perfect if you're painting on a black substrate. So we, we have a friend that came in the door. Go away, fly. Um, all of the pigment has a tendency to settle at the bottom of that bottle. So you're going to have to shake these really well. And they state that on the bottle. Shake them really well. Uh. Yeah, so I'm shaking like crazy. There's two colors. Mm. This is where I want one of those paint machines. You know, you put your paint can on it and it shakes it up. All right. So painter's palette here. I'm going to move the colors that I'm not playing with right now over. And don't put too much into your paint palette. My first mistake was I overloaded my painter's palette and it dried in the paint palette. Nope. I'm stuck. There we go. It dried so fast it literally had dried on the tip already. A little bit of orange. <laughs> yeah. Take the tamper resist caps off. I'm going to take it off this time instead of dumping it into my palette. So there's a full line of standard colors as well as a line of colors with lusters added. This one happens to be rose gold. Your favorite brush of choice. I'm going to add some thinner to this as well. So I have a little bit longer work time. also creates a translucent color on your fondant. So this up here is already dry, no color at all. So now I can layer color on top of color. There's a little hint of that rose gold. I think I'm going to punch up with more yellow on this side. So 
So being able to add color on top of color so I can adjust the depth of color makes a huge difference in the painting side of this art form. I just added a little bit of thinner here toward the end so I can spread out the color. I need to let this dry just a little bit more so I can add a another layer. And this side is already dry. Go ahead and take a moment to clean the color out of your brush. And when you're cleaning your brushes, you always want to stroke the direction of your bristles. Don't sit in there and like grind it in or you'll end up with um, bristles that are offset. You'll damage your brushes. All right, let's say I want to add some more yellow pop to this. That's where the whitener comes in. We can make this color more opaque. So you really can't layer gel colors like this. And then if I wanted to thin that a little bit and make it a little more translucent in this area, I would add that thinner and blend outward. A little too much thinner in that space, but that's okay. So you can definitely layer color on top of color. And I love that you can develop a vibrancy by adding more pigmented color. So you just saw me take this color and punch it up, change it slightly, change the yellow to more orange, was I able to add a lot more vibrancy in the red, was able to use the thinner to make it more translucent, that was pretty cool. And all on one piece of fondant, just allowing each layer to dry, don't touch it when it's like that, so I just stuck my finger right in it. So wait until it's dry before you stick your finger in it. And then keep layering colors until you get the vibrancy that you're looking for.
And again, use Everclear or something with a really high alcohol content to clean your brush. I mean, what other paint can you use where you can layer a light color on top of darker colors and still get that yellow or light color to shine through? So if you're a painterly artist, I highly recommend poppy paints for its drying ability and layering ability. I have to fix this little spot where I stuck my finger. You guys know me. I gotta fix it. Nice. Clean up is simple, never clear, and a paper towel will get that right off your countertop. Now, I really wanted to play with this on black fondant because that would probably be the color that I would end up using in, uh, in a painterly cake. So I've got a little bit of black fondant and let's see, what color do I wanna play with? I think I'm going to stick with the red. I wanna see if red will show up. We're probably going to have to add whitener to this. Yeah, so right now, red on top of black, not much happening. But if I make it more opaque, Right now I'm just playing to see how much layer I can add. I need this to dry a minute. Dry. I'm never going to get used to that. While that's drying a little bit, I am going to go pull our chocolates out of the cooler. I 
and I have the beginning of our chocolate molds. Now to add our top layers. Since the mold's cold, I'm just going to do a couple at a time. Tap it down. Clean off your outside edges. Too much chocolate in this one for sure. All right, I'm gonna pop all those air bubbles and put them back into the refrigerator. Right after I find toothpicks. So I'm loving how I'm able to layer the colors on top of colors. And now that I have a little bit of a white ground, I should be able to come through and add more red, yeah. And then if you feel like it is starting to uh, not blend as well as you'd like to, just add a touch more of the thinner. To make it a little more opaque or a translucent instead of opaque. So whitener to make it opaque and to make it layer and then more thinner to make it more translucent.
I could do this for hours, just layering and layering and layering. Let's give it a little bit of a stamen and call it good. Having the right paint brushes make a difference to you. So lots of layers on black fondant, beautiful coloration, lots of variation, lots of opportunity for variation. So I'm loving how it turned out on the black fondant and I love that I can make black my canvas now. That's fantastic. I love that. So we've done this on white fondant and on black fondant. You can see the white fondant is now completely dry. So you can place it on your cake or you can paint directly onto your cake. Let's see if our chocolates are ready to unmold yet. Right after I clean out my paintbrush. We talked a little bit about the lusters. There are two really pretty and fun lusters. One called Cotton Candy and one is called <laughs> Unicorn Elixir. I love that. Unicorn Elixir is the one I want to play with on the chocolates. On top of that, we had all kinds of beautiful golds and pearls, silvers, you name it, rose gold, um, lots of beautiful colors from Poppy Paint. But I want to just do a simple swoosh across my chocolates with the Unicorn Elixir. Chocolate, not quite ready yet. Still a little on the mushy side. But a quick recap for cleanup. High alcohol content items such as Everclear. Um, if you try to clean your palette and your brushes with water, it will just kind of bind up in the brush. We've tried vodka, but that didn't quite have enough alcohol. So get yourself some good old budget Everclear. <laughs> Don't drink it. And with the Everclear, it wipes up. You'll have to do the same thing with your painter palette. And if you spill some on your cake, I bet you can use the same technique to wipe color off of fondant. Should we give it a try? So if I had a space on here that I didn't love, it would probably take me forever to get through the layers. But it is getting lighter and I am lifting color. And we're starting to get down to the fondant. So if you've painted something on and it's a horrible mistake and you don't want to recover your entire cake, you can lift it off with high alcohol Everclear. Yay! If you have questions, please don't hesitate to let us know. You can leave a message in the comments here on YouTube or you can contact us directly at the shop at questions at artisincakes.com. And you can find us on all of our social media also at artisincakes.com. I don't know if these are ready yet. We're gonna find out. Oh yeah. You always know when the chocolate molds are ready because they just slide right out of the mold. Just like that. Unicorn elixir. Remember, all of the pigment is going to run to the bottom of the bottle. So it's going to settle right down here. You have to really shake it up.
A little bit of fresh Everclear. And Unicorn Elixir. I don't know if you can see the slight sparkle in that, in the fact that it has a variety of light colors. We're gonna leave this little bit of coral in here too, because it's pretty. Is that not cool? So depending on where you turn, it's either pink or blue or a combination. And that's unicorn elixir. I love that. Let that dry a second, and then I'll add another coat. The unicorn elixir is going to change a little bit depending on what substrate you put it on. I think this would be really pretty on galaxy dessert buffets too. Galaxy cakes. So yeah, I think I'm liking Unicorn Elixir a lot. So I wasn't quite dry on this one and I could tell I lifted a little bit. So definitely make sure it gets that full 30 seconds to dry to a couple minutes. But that is poppy paint and why I love it because I can layer up color, make dark areas, which normally doesn't happen too easily using um, gel or water-based colors on fondant. Um, also being able to layer color onto black substrates like this black fonderific fondant. Also important to note that it has that um, greasy top coat. I don't want to call it greasy. It's got an oily base to it, um, kind of like modeling chocolate. Modeling chocolate is really difficult to paint. Um, it just wants to beat up if you use water base. So poppy paint being alcohol base is perfect for that. In addition, you can layer colors. So you end up with depth of color and paint definition. And then it also works great on solid chocolate. It's also a problem in the past because it wouldn't paint smoothly. It just beads up. But you can see that's a nice smooth coat of paint in Unicorn Elixir. Pretty, pretty. That concludes our live workshop today. We are just playing around a little bit with um, poppy paint. Oh, I do have one more note. If you are looking for super shine on say your um, cake pops or chocolates or even on your fondant itself, poppy paint has come out with super shine, which is kind of like a confectionery glaze. Watch this magic. We use this on the eyes of a dog and the eyes of a wild turkey a couple of weeks ago and I loved it. So the super shine comes back through and gives yourself a glaze or top coat.
Oops. All right, that truly does conclude our poppy paint demonstration today. If you live in an area that's super humid, like Arkansas, <laughs> I do recommend poppy paint for anything that you have to paint on the outside of fondant. You can always seal it with a confectioner's glaze as well for an additional method of keeping that paint from running down the sides of your cake. All right, thanks guys, and we will see you next Friday. Have a great day.